Hello and welcome to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew, and I would like to personally thank you for taking the time to stop and watch this content today. I developed this channel to deliver gaming news, reviews, and speculation in the gaming and tech industry. So if you like this kind of content and you want to see more, don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's get started with the show. Thank you. So guys, I'm still hearing a lot about the misleading of PlayStation. PlayStation 5 specifically, and content that was supposed to be coming exclusively to the PlayStation 5. We now know that God of War and Gran Turismo 7 are both in development for PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4. We were told that development for the PlayStation 4 for these titles didn't start till you know, pretty recently, you know, so that, so that they could uh, get them out. A lot of this probably has to do with the shortages of PlayStation. This video is not to condemn Sony in any way, shape, or form. Um, do I think that... Do I think that's a good thing? Yeah, I think it's a good thing. I was on the other side of the Xbox fence saying, yeah, that's a good thing. So, in all actuality, like, <laughs> this is a good thing for gamers. There's 110 million people out there with a PlayStation 4 that are having a hard time getting a PlayStation 5 that this is going to be good for. I don't see any problem with that as long as the PlayStation 5 versions of these games can deliver me a 4K 60, I'm perfectly okay with that on my PlayStation 5. Like, I, I would be happy with that. We've all seen how beautiful and how great PlayStation 4 games can look. So as long as I'm getting the best version with the best performance on my PlayStation 5, I don't care if they support the PlayStation 4 for another 10 years. Like, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. The biggest thing I wanted with this generation is 4K60. So as long as I get games that play at 4K60, I'm perfectly okay with them supporting last-gen hardware. And honestly, I think they should continue to support last-gen hardware. If Fidelity FX can make it so they can still provide a visual, a, a good visual experience on last-gen hardware, as well as give it a stable frame rate, I don't see why they shouldn't be able to do that. I understand that PlayStation 5's fast SSD is is and was the big marketing uh, ploy for Sony this generation. Uh, PlayStation 3 was the cell chip. PlayStation 4 was more power than the Xbox One. I mean, basically, they were both underpowered right from the gate when they launched. But that's not the case this generation. In this case, this generation, we have two pretty decent machines that the, all of the capabilities aren't even being used yet. So if they're going to take another, you know, year or two years, you know, to continue to develop software for the PlayStation 4 as well as the PlayStation 5, I don't see that as a bad thing. As long as the PlayStation 4 version is going to get a, like I just said, as long as they're going to get a good visual package with with a solid performance, I'm perfectly okay with that. If, uh, the Sony's developers, you know, these guys are amazing. They make some of the best looking games on the market, hands down. There's no, there's no question about that. There's never been a question about that. I know I do have a lot of videos out right now that are mostly, you know, pro Xbox. And, and yes, I'm happy with the way that Xbox has been doing things this generation. This, this type of news that Sony's putting out now makes me happier for PlayStation as well. I love those those things on the Xbox. I am glad that Sony is starting to, you know, take it seriously and, you know, continue developing for that older generation of hardware. This is not a bad thing, guys. This is a good thing. The more people that can get these experiences, the better. As long as my experience is 4K at 60 frames a second, I am perfectly okay with that. And it doesn't even have to be native 4K. It can be upscaled 4K. Like, for her, right, we just found out that Forbidden West will have a performance mode. And according to the developers, they said their words were the resolution is going to take a little bit of a hit. So I'm crossing my fingers for 1800p checkerboarded to 4K. That would be amazing. Like, if they can run that in a native 1800p at 4K, oh my gosh, I'd be so freaking happy. I would be so happy with for with with her with Forbidden West. Like that would be amazing to be able to play that game at, you know, a, um, a checkerboard 4K 60. Like that would be fine with me. I would be perfectly okay with that. Like I do have a problem with checkerboarding. You know, like I don't like the way it artifacts and hair and vegetation. Like I, I I don't like that fuzzy look. You know, I I don't 
I don't like it. And it and it's worse the lower the the lower the base resolution, the worse the checkerboarding looks. So if they're checkerboarding from like a 1440p or a 4k or or an 1800p, it usually turns out the checkerboarding doesn't look too bad. So I'm I'm perfectly okay with that. Um when they're doing it from a 1080p that just does not hold up that well. I do not like the way it looks. I'm sorry. I don't feel like that is acceptable on a next gen hardware to to upscale from 1080p that just it, it doesn't look right i'm sorry i cannot I, I i can't i'm not okay with that but guys this is amazing this is good news that playstation is doing this xbox has been leading the way with all of these services and stuff if sony jumps on board that's amazing for gamers that is good for all of us that will that will create more sales and revenue for PlayStation and Xbox if they continue to support older generations. I mean, look at look at what we've seen this generation, last generation. Okay, we had the the PS4 Pro, we had the Xbox One X, we had the Nintendo Switch. For hey, for freak's sake, the Nintendo Switch was getting games like Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein and all these other experiences ported down. I mean, yeah, it didn't look good. It looked like you know, I mean, but it but it was still playable. It was still you could still get a visual representation of the video game that you were playing on the go. So, my my thoughts on this are, yeah, if they can port a game back there, do it. By all means, if they can deliver a, a playable experience at a decent resolution, yeah, I'm all for that. Like, I mean, you guys saw... The Last of Us 2, didn't you? Like, that game's freaking beautiful. You saw Ghost of Tsushima... That game was beautiful. You saw God of War. That game was beautiful. There's no reason why they need to stop developing for those for those last gen consoles, especially now that they know how to do it so well. Everything they build and then they just make even better on PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 version, we're guaranteed like a 4K 60 performance on that. Last gen games didn't look that bad. They actually hold up really well nowadays. I mean, like the first of the generation, you know, those those first couple of years of last gen. Yeah, I don't know. They don't hold up too well. But I mean, give them a give them a 4K upgrade, and you know, like they they would probably they would probably hold up pretty well. If Watch Dogs got a remake, you know, I mean, yeah, that would be, that'd be awesome. You know, stuff stuff like that. Um, I don't see this as a bad thing. I am actually fairly confident that this this I don't think that that's the way they had it planned. I I really don't. I mean, it's going to take 3 or 4 years before we actually see what these next gen consoles can really do. So if they continue supporting last gen for 3 more years, I mean, that's not a bad thing. I mean, as long as they're not taken away from trying to develop for the new consoles, I don't see that as a bad thing. Like I kind of want video games to to merge and kind of stay, you know. I like the visuals of last generation, okay? Like they they were good, okay? These the last generation was the best the best it's ever been, okay? So, if we add, you know, going forward, you know, we're still they're still developing games, you know, for for cross gen and they're still making them, you know, look as good as they were at the end of the generation and maybe even being able to port back um newer technologies like nanite you know nanite is possible on last gen consoles so if they can get nanite from ue5 to work on last gen consoles that would still better the the visual experience going forward so i mean the base model of the next gen consoles is the xbox series s okay it's got eight gigs of ram you've got the playstation 4 pro that's just under that i mean i i, I think it's just a little bit less you know of, of usable storage um, of, of RAM and then you've got you know Xbox one X that could still benefit from I mean that had 12 gigs So I mean they, they were almost what nine nine gigs that they could use of usable memory so all of these consoles They can still continue to develop for it. and if nanite works and newer technologies are backward compatible or fidelity FX is is, is able to run on last-gen hardware That's how we can can that's how they can continue to create those experiences Yes, last gen consoles are not going to compete with the newer um, technology of um, of SSDs. 
as long as our newer games are loading, you know, within a few seconds or whatever, I don't see that as being a problem because to me that is still next gen. Ratchet and Clank is the only thing that they've actually went out of their way to think outside of the box to try to put the, um, to try to make the SSD to, uh, to, to actually work in like loading games and like Spider-Man. I mean, we saw how fast they, as long as it's designed around that and imported back to last gen, like I don't see a problem with with uh sony or microsoft doing this and microsoft coming out at the beginning of the generation saying hey man we're still going to make games cross-gen that was cool you know like i i knew what to expect with sony coming out and saying yeah we're we believe in generations and we're going to make new games and then you know seven months later being like oh well yeah those new experiences are going to be that's kind of misleading but like they're a corporation i mean like they, they were they, uh, <laughs> why wouldn't they do that especially last gen consoles were actually pretty capable machines like we got some pretty good experiences and for somebody to get a next gen game a last gen version of it at four at 4k 30 or you know whatever oh well you know i mean that just that that gives because not a lot of people are going to be able to upgrade you know anytime soon according to you know the, the chip shortages and everything else so why would we why would we demand Sony or Microsoft completely leave those guys in the dust knowing that it's going to take them a long time to be able to... Because, I mean, think about it. We're already complaining about our next-gen consoles not having software. We're already complaining about that. Every single one of us, we're, we're complaining about that. Everybody's complaining, oh, man, we're just playing old games. Everybody on Sony's playing, well, we're, I mean, you're getting like one adult game for every three, you know, child, child type games, you know, everybody's complaining. So if we're just getting all next gen experiences and last gen's not getting nothing, come on guys, come on. You, you, see, how, you see how ridiculous that sounds? We're gamers. We want new experiences. We want to play these things. It doesn't matter if we have to play them on a Nintendo Switch. We're going to want to play them, you know, so... This is good for the industry. This is good for us. This is good for gaming. This is good for Sony and Microsoft to be able to continue to tap into those those revenue streams. I think about that's how I think about things, you know? I mean, like I think about things, you know, from a point of view like like money is money, you know? Like these corporations and these these places, they need to make some sort of money and and a return, you know, so that they can you know pay their investors <clears throat> like when we're younger that's that's the whole thing you know you're supposed to work you know and, and and like the way it used to be is you would take like five five percent ten percent or whatever and you would invest it you would take ten percent out of everything you'd make and you would invest it and that's what like those older people have done you know the, their whole lives they'd worked and they'd invested a little invested a little so that they can retire because if you try to retire on social security that's just not enough money that that's not enough money to sustain you through your golden years for the rest of your life. So I, I'm saying this is because, you know, people have invested into these companies. And yeah, you know, it can seem like they're getting a little, you know, things are getting a little way out of proportion. And, and that's definitely true. You know, I mean, back in, you know, 35, 40 years ago, I mean, you were paying $50,000 for a house. Now, now you're paying like 400000 to get into a house. But, you know, <laughs> like, <clears throat> yeah, we're not going to get started on that that whole thing, but I'm just saying, like, these guys need to be able to continue to create revenue, you know? If the, if the investors aren't getting a good return on their investment, they're going to quit allowing, you know, for $100 million budgets to build video games. So then the then in the end, I mean, these, these experiences are going to suffer. Basically, is what I'm saying is let's, you know... I don't want to see people mad about this. I've been seeing comments all day, like freaking people just upset that this is going to happen. They're going to be putting PlayStation games on PC day and date too. Like mark my words, this is going to happen. And it's going to happen probably within the next year. We're going to start seeing exclusive games launch simultaneously on PlayStation and on PC at the same time. Whether that's through Sony's new little launcher that they're going to develop for PlayStation. These things are going to happen. It's going to happen. I honestly feel like Sony should rip the band-aid off right now and tell everybody, hey, you know what? We've decided that we are going to, going forward, we're going to make PlayStation 5 games 
available on the PC. You know, because the PCs are still going to have to have NVMe drives as fast as the PlayStation 5 to run these experiences. So it's not not everybody not everybody can run out and grab one of those one of those NVMe drives. I mean, they're kind of expensive. 200 bucks is I mean, you just paid five hundred dollars for your PlayStation Five, and now another two hundred bucks just for one terabyte. That's seven hundred dollars for a PlayStation Five. If you get two terabytes, that's nine hundred dollars for a PlayStation Five. So I feel bad for anybody that paid a scalper any more than MSRP for a PlayStation Five because you are in for a world. Because I've got maybe ten games on my PS Five, and it's already full. I can't even put a Call of Duty on there. Not ever even going to happen. So yeah, um, I don't feel. I, I'm not upset about this. Like it, I'm. I'm not. You know, I knew this was coming. I could feel this was coming. I already. I've. I've already told you guys. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've already. You've already heard me say that God of War would be coming to PlayStation Four. My thought on that was this. This was my whole thought on it. it was when they when they showed that God of War was coming in in 2021. My first thought was, okay, this is going to be cross gen. Um, cause that makes sense. You know, San, Sony Santa Monica has been started working on it during the PlayStation four. And, um, you know, I, I didn't see the grand Turismo seven coming. I really thought that was going to be next gen exclusive because I thought that they were going to be, you know, targeting that. But if you look back to uh, grand Turismo sport, every single asset created for grand Turismo sport was scalable all the way up to eight K. So everything is in place for, for all of that. And, it, and it's scalable so yeah this last year they probably have had to work a little bit scaling it back down for playstation 4 and that's probably why we got the 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 delay in the first place so so i mean if like i said if you've been watching my channel you already knew that but my thing was they've already been they've already invested all that research and development into the playstation 4 version for the next god of war they wanted to build it for playstation 5 as well um my thought was it was going to launch this year so that Sony Santa Monica could get on to start making PS5 exclusive games. Same thing with Horizon, you know, Forbidden West. That game, the same the same theory applies to uh, to the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. Uh, Gran Turismo, like I seriously did not see that coming. Um, Ratchet & Clank was developed directly for PlayStation 5, but I'm pretty sure if they wanted to... Um, they would find a way to port that back to the to the uh, PlayStation 4 so that um, those players can enjoy it as well. So that's my more two cents on this. I've already I already put a video out yesterday. I just I've really seen a lot of people you know talking about it today. So I just wanted to reassure everybody that hey this is, it, this is in our best interest in the long run. Um, I, I know I sound like a corporate shield or whatever, but like. Dude, it's just I'm 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 an older gamer, you know. Things like this don't surprise me anymore. Like it, like it it makes logical sense in my brain, you know, because of where I've been and what I've done in my life. That it just it makes sense to why to why Sony is going to do this and <clears throat> the risk versus reward. The reward is far greater than the risk. I mean, what are they going to do? Make three percent of the of the of the console space really mad? Yeah, what, what are they gonna do? I mean, you're if you if if you're if you're that three percent, you're a fanboy. There's no way you're going to freaking Xbox. You're gonna stay with PlayStation. You're gonna piss and moan for a little while, and then you're gonna be okay with it. Just like everybody on Xbox, all the fanboys on Xbox, they they pissed and moaned about it when they started going to PC, and when everything started going differently for them, like they, they were mad, but they're still there. They're still playing Xbox games. Like that's just the way it is, you know. But I've got a I've got a solution for you. Just buy both and enjoy both, my friends. So, if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you in the next video. Thank you.